Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. Before I get into anything today, I do just want to take a quick moment to thank you guys so much for your support and patience over the past few months. I know it's been quite a while since I uploaded anything, but the end of high school just got really stressful. I kind of had to make that my main focus for a while and I just didn't get around to filming. But it is finally summer now, so I have a lot more time to put out some content for you guys. I have quite a few videos ready to be filmed, so you can expect those in the next few weeks. Without any further ado, let's just get into today's topic. So things in the US and especially in my state are generally returning back to normal. I'm fully vaccinated, so are a lot of my other friends, so I've been going out a lot more. And fingers crossed that quarantine is done for good. But I just thought today was the perfect time to give you guys a sort of wrap up of everything I've been loving for the past year or so. I think the last time I made a quarantine favorites video was August of last year, so about 10 months ago. A lot has happened since then, I've picked up some things, I've been taking a lot in. There's just a lot I have to share with you guys, so let's just jump right into it. So I think I'm going to start off with some clothing pickups. The first three items I want to share are a few pairs of 90s vintage Levi's 501s. I feel like my style has sort of been moving in a direction of longevity, picking up pieces that are going to last in my wardrobe and are very versatile and wearable on a day-to-day -day basis. I am going to be a college student soon, so I fully expect not to have the most dispensable income just to be able to spend on clothes whenever I want. So I've kind of just been picking up some staples that I think really work with each other and that I can feel good in on a daily basis. The brown and gray pairs were from Blind Date on Instagram. I highly recommend checking them out. They have a really good selection of vintage and designer pieces. And then the off-white pair was from No Maintenance, which is probably my favorite vintage store on Instagram. They have a really good selection of jeans, t-shirts, crewnecks, hoodies, pretty much all the staples that you need for a good wardrobe. The only thing I would warn you about with pretty much any pants with a released hem is the risk of heel bite which is pretty much when the fabric is worn through on this released hem and then your heel basically goes through it and creates this really floppy section that just kind of hangs off the back. It's pretty annoying in my opinion. I do need to repair these. It's just kind of something on my to-do list that I haven't gotten around to yet. Um, it's not the biggest issue, but just something to keep in mind. Next pickup on the list is a pair of woven trousers from Rick Owens Autumn Winter 2010. I'm just so in love with these for the summer. If you know me, you know I hate wearing shorts, and these are just the perfect lightweight woven material. They have this really nice, almost horizontal corduroy style pattern on them that's super subtle, but it gives the piece a lot of texture and dimension at the same time. Once again, these come with an elongated inseam. I believe these are actually a 35, so they give a really nice drape with that lightweight material. Next up, we have a couple vintage Russell Crew necks. These are just the absolute essential staple for anyone, in my opinion a good blank crew neck can really bring you a long way. I'll start off with this black one which was actually gifted to me by my good friends Orlando and Thomas, so huge shout out and thanks to them. They run the Instagram page at Vault Garments which has a really good selection of designer and vintage pieces for good prices, so definitely go check them out. I really can't thank them enough for this one. This is a gold tag edition which I believe is from the 70s which is super cool. I really love the fit of this guy. Um, most of them come with this blue and red tag which I believe is from the 90s. Absolutely nothing wrong with those. I love this one to death too, and I'll show you how that fits me as well. But I just really love how this one looks on body. I really love rolling the sleeves up on this one just to switch up the silhouette a little bit. I might not be wearing it as much in the summer just because it's getting into the 90s right now and I would just probably suffocate in this. But nonetheless, it's a great piece for spring, fall, and winter. I'll be getting a ton of wear out of this one. And then the gray one was also thrown into a package which I will be showing you later. Um, it was a pretty big purchase and the homie Rosif, who owns No Maintenance and Lake Vienna, decided to throw this into the package as well and this has become honestly one of my favorite pieces. As I showed you before, this is the red and blue tag from the 90s and this one is much more of an oversized fit. That one was a large whereas this one's actually tagged in XL. Um, it does fit kind of more like a large though, just a boxier fit. This is just such a cozy crew neck, great for lounging around the house and making quick runs to the grocery store or something like that. Also won't be wearing it as much in the summer just because of the weather, but I cannot wait to get a lot more wear out of this. Next item is probably my favorite piece for the summer. It is this Andamula Meester Wandering in the Dark tank top. There's two versions of this tank top. There was a cashmere one and then this 100% cotton one, which was much cheaper. I ended up getting this on Depop for about 90 bucks, which I think was a really good deal. But this just fits me like a glove. It does have a little bit of an elongated fit, so it's perfect for tucking into whatever pants you're wearing. If you guys saw that last Quarantine Favorites video, I showed you the Raph Simmons 2002 tank top, 
which had a little bit more of a wide shoulder fit. This fits a lot more like an undershirt, just super snug, and I think it's perfect for summer. Next up is an item that just actually came in the mail yesterday and I am so in love with it. This is the Our Legacy Check Box shirt and it's in the white and beige colorway. They also make an asphalt gray and sort of darker colorway that I saw Owen Hyatt have in his last pickups video. I absolutely love that and I knew that I needed that silhouette in my life. Um, but I just thought I needed something lighter and white in my wardrobe because I'm kind of missing that as you can see. But the fit of this piece definitely lives up to its name. It's a very boxy fit. I did go with a medium which is a size 48 and I feel like I could have even sized down one on this guy. Next up is this absolutely crazy object dyed shell jacket from Who is Jacob. The story with this one is pretty crazy to me. This was actually a gift from Jacob. Jacob Wallace was one of the first people that I really looked up to in fashion and he made me want to start making videos about fashion. So this channel probably honestly would not be here without him and I am just so grateful for this gift. There's just so many details that went into this. There are these super huge zip pockets on the back that just go on forever. And then there's another pocket on top of it that is also super deep. There's also a backpack pocket. You don't even have to use a backpack to carry stuff around in this. You can just throw it in your jacket. There's also a zip pocket on the arm. This has a detachable hood that can come off which gives it a completely different look. It's just been really cool seeing Jacob's clothes evolve over the past few years. I was buying his stuff in 2018 when he was putting out those summer shorts and stuff like that. And the details and the quality has just taken a huge leap since then, so it's really cool to see. This is just definitely gonna be my go-to jacket for the fall. I love the object dyed look. I love all the details that went into it. And I'm super proud of Jacob on this one. Can't thank him enough for it. Shout out to who is Jacob. Second to last pickup is this pair of Adrian loafers from Doc Martens. I was just looking for a perfect shoe that wasn't a sneaker that I could wear every day and beat and still feel good in. They're also super reminiscent of a pair of Dries Van Noten loafers that I've wanted for a while. I was just not prepared to spend the 700 bucks on them so I decided to go with these as an alternative. These were I think 130 bucks, so they're a lot more affordable. In terms of sizing on these, I would definitely recommend sizing down one. I usually wear an 11 or a 10 and a half, and I went with a 10. Um, they fit perfectly. I actually tried on a nine at the store and they accidentally sent me home with those, so I had to go back and get the 10. Um, so I kind of had to run around with these, but I'm finally happy with the product that I have in hand. As I've heard with most Doc Martens, these definitely require a break-in period. They're still pretty uncomfortable and they chafe on my heel a little bit when I walk after like five or six wears. I definitely feel them getting more comfortable though and I'm on my way to breaking them in. Final clothing pickup is probably the biggest one and it's something that I've wanted to buy myself for a while. These were a graduation slash birthday gift to myself. They're the biggest purchase I've made in such a long time. They are the Guidi 796V. So I got these second hand from my good friend Rosif. Huge shout out to him for hooking me up. These were basically brand new when I got them. I believe they were only tried on, so they were not broken in yet. I don't want to talk too much about these just because I'm making a whole video about Guidi in my next video. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick summary of what these are. These are the back zip edition. They're made out of a full grain horse leather. The really special thing about these to me is that they come with the Vibram lug sole as opposed to the leather stack sole, which gives them a little bit more of an elegant look. The lug sole just kind of makes them the perfect balance between elegance and a utilitarian kind of look in my opinion. I'm just absolutely in love with these boots and I don't regret making that huge purchase. Definitely make sure you stay tuned for my next video about Weedy. It's gonna be sort of from an informational standpoint as well as a review on these guys. Next, I do want to get into some self-care items that I've picked up recently from the brand Aesop. I just think it's been so important to invest in my well-being and self-care before anything else recently. It really helps me get through my daily routine and these are just a few of my favorite products. I've heard nothing but great things about Aesop and I recently saw that they opened a store in Bucktown in Chicago, so I just had to stop by. I picked up four items, I got the Geranium Leaf Body Scrub the Classic Conditioner, the Deodorant, and then the Cedar and Citrus Lip Salve. I will say the deodorant has probably been the biggest game changer for me out of the four products. I was just looking for an aluminum free, sort of chemical free deodorant for the longest time. And each of them kind of had their own problems. Some of them didn't last long enough. Some of them just smelled bad. But this one is sort of the best of all worlds. The Geranium Leaf Body Scrub also kind of blew my mind when I first used it. It has pumice in it, which is a really good physical exfoliant. It leaves your skin feeling so soft. It's just such a fresh sort of invigorating scent. And if you want to add a little bit of spice to your care routine, definitely invest in a good body scrub. I got the classic conditioner in this little travel size just because I wanted to try it out before investing in the full size bottle. 
I'm still kind of unsure about the full-size bottle. I really do love it so far. It doesn't leave my hair greasy like a lot of other conditioners do, but it's just kind of a lot to spend on a conditioner. The only item I got from Aesop that I probably wouldn't recommend is the Citrus Lip Solve, just because it's 17 bucks for a lip balm, which is definitely outrageous in my opinion. While it is great, it smells really good and it leaves your lips pretty soft, it's definitely not worth the 17 bucks in my opinion. Everything is a little bit pricey from them, but this is one that I just definitely wouldn't probably buy again. But I've been loving all my products from Aesop so far. Like I said, it's just so important to take care of your well-being and invest in it. Make sure you're soothing your body, make sure you're smelling good, all that good stuff. Just take care of yourself and your body will thank you. The first movie I want to talk about is one that really touched my heart and actually won some Academy Awards recently. It is Minari. This is one of A24's newest films written and directed by Isaac Lee Chung. It's about a Korean American family who moves to Arkansas in the 80s in hopes of starting a farm and finding a better life. This is truly a story of struggle and it evokes such strong emotions. It brought me to tears multiple times throughout the film. The cinematography is amazing and one thing that really stood out to me was actually the wardrobes in the film. Whoever styled it did a really good job of seemingly sourcing some really good vintage stuff and creating some period accurate looks. The one thing I will say is do not watch the trailer, it's full of spoilers. I actually didn't watch the trailer before watching the movie which I'm really glad about because I was showing my girlfriend Gabby uh, the trailer for the movie and it showed like the most important scene so do not watch the trailer. The next movie I want to talk about is one that also really touched my heart, it's called Sound of Metal. This is a 2019 film directed by Darius Martyr, and it follows Ruben, who is played by Riz Ahmed. Ruben is an ex-addict heavy metal drummer who plays in a band with his girlfriend. He's hit with a sudden realization that he's losing his hearing, and it turns his life upside down. It really opened my eyes to how much I take for granted in life, especially something as essential as your sense of hearing. And this movie took me through all the stages of grief and loss, but didn't have that fluffy sentimental stuff that most dramas come with. The sound design was probably one of my favorite parts. The way they portrayed deafness was so immersive. Instead of just making it silent, they had this really weird rumbling, ringing sound that kind of put you in Ruben's shoes. The last film I want to talk about is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, starring Jim Carrey. This is far different from his usual mind-numbing comedy. He plays the character of Joel, whose ex-girlfriend Clementine gets a medical procedure done to erase any trace of memory from Joel from her mind. Joel finds out that she did this and gets the same procedure done to himself only to regret forgetting somebody that he truly loved. This is an oddly conceptual storyline for a Jim Carrey role, and it was really kind of weird to see him in this setting, but he did a really great job and it made me think of whether or not something like that could actually be real someday. It vaguely reminds me of Her, a movie I mentioned in the last favorites video, so if you guys like that, I definitely think that you'll like this. We're alone and we're happy but there you are, angry with me, are you alright? I can stand up straight Couldn't really love you anymore You've become my ceiling Okay, so my camera died, so I'm just going to have to finish the video on my phone. But that's pretty much going to do it for my final episode of Quarantine Favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. It was super fun to make, and I hope you got something from it. If you did, maybe consider liking and subscribing down below if you're new to the channel, maybe, possibly. That's pretty much going to do it for this video. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.